This is the second section of chapter three on complex numbers. And here we're going to be looking at regions in uh, our Argand diagram. Now, the only difference between this and loci is it's about shading some part of our loci. It might be inside a shape, outside a shape or between a shape. So the loci that we're going to be looking at is basically like an argument. So we know this is to do with half lines and it's going to be basically shading between two angles. Yeah, so this is shading between two half lines. So if I was to sort of maybe draw this generally with my real and imaginary axis. So let's say that the point Z1 was here. That means I'm going to be measuring angles from this point here. That'll be where I measure theta from. So for example, whoops, and I should put an open circle at the end. So this, for example, might be um, theta one. So that would be the half line represented by this greater than or equal to, so it's a solid line here. And um, let's draw another one. Let's say we had another half line over here. So basically this angle here would be theta two and the shading that I would have would be between them. So I'd be looking to shade this part here. So it's fairly straightforward, just shading between these two half lines. Okay, so on this question here, we want to describe algebraically in terms of Z, the region shown in each argon diagram. Now, all of these are the same sort of a region. So we want to give our answers in this type of form. Sorry, that should be theta. Let's call that theta one and theta two. Now these symbols here may be slightly different depending on whether we have a solid or a dotted line. So let's start with A. You'll notice on A, I've added the number one. Uh, without the one being there, this question would be impossible to do. So I think it's missing from the question. So with all of these, we need two things. We need to know the value of Z1. That's where the half line starts. And the angle um, where the shading starts and where the shading finishes. So on this first one here, the value of uh, Z1 here where the half line starts you see that's the coordinate negative three one so that's the complex number negative three plus one or one i or plus um i the angle well we can see that it starts here at zero degrees notice that there's a dotted line here so that's going to mean we're going to use this symbol or this symbol and then the other angle we need is this one round to here. Now we can use a trigonometry to work that out because the length of this side here would be three. The length of this side here will be three as well. So that'd be the tan inverse of three over three or um, tan inverse of one. Um, even if we didn't have a calculator, we can see that this is an isosceles triangles and these two angles here are both going to be the same, which means they're both 45 degrees and in radians, that would be pi over four. So what we've got is the shading between um, zero degrees, oops, let's put theta, so zero or zero radians. This symbol, because we've got the dotted line at the start of the shaded region, and then it's the argument of Z minus Z1. Now Z1 is that 
minus three plus i and then it goes all the way around to pi over four now what we can do is we can tidy this up here in the bracket and leave our final answer as zero less than argument of z plus three minus i once we expand the bracket less than or equal to pi over four so that would be part a moving on to part b where we've got this one here so um, again what we need is um, this point here and that's root three plus one i or i so that's where the half line starts that's going to be part of our answer and then we're going to need the argument round to here and then the argument round to here so the first argument's easy because that's going straight up so that argument is pi over two and then we need to know this argument going around here now we can give the argument also as a negative argument so we can either give it as a positive one around here or a negative one around here either way we'll need to work out the size of this angle here so let's maybe just draw a little diagram out here so we can see that a little bit more clearly so basically what we've got is this triangle here where this side is one because you can see that edge goes up to one and the length of this side here well that's just going to be root three we want to find this angle here that's going to be the tan inverse or arc tan since we're dealing in radians of um, one over root three the opposite over the adjacent and that gives exactly pi over six radians so if we gave this angle going around that way or that argument that would actually be pi plus pi over six so that's like 180 plus that little bit extra so that would be seven pi over six or if we did it this way that would be given as a negative and that would be pi minus pi over six so given as a negative um, argument that would be minus five pi over six so they're both equivalent we just want to pick the one where we end up writing our answer in this form with the smaller argument here and a larger argument here so we get the inequality size this way around that's the proper way to do it so keeping it in this format this is going to be the smaller one and then if we're going around to the larger one it has to be the seven pi over six because this being negative is going to be smaller that keeps the inequality size the white way around so that will give us um, starting at pi over two our argument and it's less than or equal to because we have a solid line and the argument I've said minus uh, root three plus i and that's less than or equal to because we've got a solid line down here seven pi over six seven pi over six so just like before we can tidy up what's in the brackets so then we get the argument of z minus root three uh, minus i less than or equal to seven pi over six four b now if we move on to part c you may notice something the part c is actually the opposite shading to what we have here so let's just write it down so it's the opposite shading to part b 
So actually, we don't need to work all of this out from scratch because we know these arguments. We know that this is pi over two. We know this positive argument here is seven pi over six. And we know that this argument round here is negative um, five pi over six. The only difference is, is that rather than starting at pi over two and going around to seven pi over six, we're actually starting at pi over two and then going back round to negative five pi over six. Now I want to show you something in terms of inequality. If we just took our answer to part B and just said, well, we just flip the signs to get the inequality, we would end up with something like this. So we'd have pi over two, but rather than it being less than, it would be greater than or equal to argument z minus root three minus i, greater than or equal to seven pi over six. But this is not really the correct way to be writing inequalities. We shouldn't have these greater than or equal to symbols. We really need the less than or equal to sim symbols here. And if we're going to do that, remember we need the smaller argument here and the bigger one here. Well, that's not going to work, is it? But if we change, instead of using seven pi over six, we use the negative five pi over six like this, then we can keep the signs the right way around like this. Yeah, so this time I use the negative version of this inequality or of, of this argument, sorry, um, to get the inequality signs the right way around. And this statement basically is equivalent to the statement at the top, but just written in the correct format. So we can see that the shading is less than pi over two and greater than this negative uh, five pi over six. And lastly, moving on to part D, um, you can see on part D, we've got the overlap in the shading of two things here. Now, when we have this overlap shading, then we need to write our answer in set notation. Now, that means that we write uh, each of the regions starting like this. So we start by writing Z is basically in the set of complex numbers. And then we'll write down what are the, the area of shading is here. And then we'll either use a union symbol, IU, a union symbol or intersect symbol. And then we do the same for the second set of shading like this set is in a set of complex numbers. And then we write down what that shading is here. Now in this case, we've got an overlap of shading. So it's gonna be the union symbol that goes between both of our, uh, sorry, not union symbol, the intersect symbol, because it's an overlap of shading, will go between our set notations. So we just need to write down what these uh, different shadings are. So let's start with the half line here. Okay, so what we've got, if we work this out, so we've got shading between the half line of these arguments. Now the bigger argument is just pi, go around to there. The smaller argument, well, we can use a little bit of trigonometry to help us work out what that is. So we've got this triangle here. I want to find this angle and uh, using the coordinates, I can see the length of this side here is two because it just goes from three to five. And this side here, well, it goes from zero down to negative two. So the length of this side here is two. That means that this angle here it's an isosceles triangle again, is going to be pi over four. Now, what does that mean? Well, 
that means that this argument here is pi over 2 plus pi over 4. So it's 3 pi over 4. So um, let's do half line first. So it's going from 3 pi over 4 solid line. Now the half line starts at the point here which is going to be 5 minus 2. So it said minus 5 minus 2i. I have got enough space for my inequality, but I know that it goes all the way around to pi. OK, I'm going to write it like that for now. But when I come to write my final answer in set notation, I will simplify the bit in the brackets. So now let's look at the circle. And the circle, I can see that the center of the circle is going to be at three across and minus two down. And its radius, well, I should be able to use the coordinates to find the radius. So yeah, this is a distance of two, isn't it? From the center there to the edge. So it's gonna have a radius of two. So since we're actually shading the inside of the circle and there's no dotted line on the edge of the circle, it's less than or equal to two. So remember with circles, this symbol means the inside of the circle. If you had greater than or equal to, it would be shading outside of the circle somewhere. Now we can put our two answers together using the intersect notation because it's only the shading where these two regions overlap. And that's going to be like this. So Z in the set of complex numbers. And what is this? Let's start with a half line, three pi over four, less than or equal to argument of, we'll simplify the bracket. So it said minus five plus two I, less than or equal to pi. And it's that and the intersect of, let me use a similar type of thing for the second bracket, like this. But this one is going to be Z minus three plus two I, less than or equal to two. And I curly brackets, lovely curly brackets there. So I'll just highlight that as my final answer for D is my answer for C, answer for B, and my answer for A. So on this question here, we've been given um, some regions here and we just need to show what they are on our game diagram. So we'll start with part A. And um, I'll sort of try and draw a nice big clear diagram here and uh, B will do over here. Now, don't forget when you do these, um, you should really label your axis the real and imaginary axis like this to show that you're plotting these on the complex plane. OK, so let's start with this one here. So this is going to be a half line. And the half line starts basically at the origin. So let's put that here, put a circle there. And it's between the angles at 2 pi over 3 up to pi. So I know it goes up to here, OK, because that's going to be pi. And 2 pi over 3, I like to think in terms of degrees because that helps me work out roughly how big the angle is. Pi over 3 would be 60 degrees, so 2 pi over 3 is like 120 degrees. So 120 degrees um, is going to be something like this, halfway between 90 and 180. Well, not really halfway between 90 and 180. 
that would be 135 actually it would be closer to 90 so it's going to be something like that okay so we've drawn the first part here and um, we're not going to shade it just yet because we want the overlap of both of these shadings so I'm going to draw the circle and then I'll fill in the um, the overlap shading so the second one I've got here is a circle with radius 5 and the center of the circle so if I just write this out as Z minus that would be Z minus minus 3 plus 4 I so that tells me the center of the circle is at the coordinate negative 3 4 so let's do this in a different color so negative 3 4 so let's put that here so 4 negative 3 maybe I should have that as a, a dot really now we need to make sure that we get the center of the circle on the right side of the line and we can do that by actually checking the size of this argument here and we'll see that that argument is actually larger than 2 pi over 3 okay so it's useful to check that just to make sure you get it in the right place and this circle has a radius of 5 now this isn't to scale but I do need to know where the edges of the circle go so if it's got a radius of 5 it's going to the top of the circle is going to go up to 9 the bottom of the circle is going to go to negative 1 then the side of the circle well that will go to negative 8 here and over this side it will go to 2 and basically what I need to do now is to join up the dots for my circle now it may not look like a perfect circle because of my scale but it's important that I get it to cross the axis in the correct places like this and actually this one terrible circle here goes through the origin because this is a distance of five actually let me try drawing that circle again okay that's better I just moved my um, numbers on the axes across a bit now I want the intersect of these two shadings this means inside the circle this less than or equal to five this means between these two angles and those overlap here so this would be the part that I shade that'll be the bit that I'm interested in there now for part B I've rubbed out the grid that I've drawn because I've realized actually we've got some algebra to do to work out this before we draw it and this because of the format it seems going to be a circle but we need to find the center and the radius of that circle algebraically so we'll write it out 2z minus 4 is less than or equal to z now remember the first step is to replace z with x plus iy or yi so i'll have 2 and then in brackets x plus iy minus 4 less than or equal to x plus iy then we're going to collect together the real and imaginary terms now there's only x minus 4 to collect on the left hand side like this so the other side will just remain as x plus iy next step is to square both sides so if we do that we'll have 2 squared and then we'll have x plus 4 sorry x minus 4 squared plus y squared and all of that's in brackets is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared now you could show that you're 
squaring both sides by putting my little squared like that there. Right, so next step after that is going to be to expand the brackets and simplify. So inside the square brackets, we're going to have x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared less than or equal to, well, it's just x squared plus y squared. From here, what we'll do is we'll expand these brackets. So 4x squared minus 32x plus 64 plus 4y squared less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. We'll move everything over to the same side. So if we um, take away x squared from both sides, we'll have 3x squared. Um, and then we'll just have minus 32x. And then we'll take away uh, y squared from both sides. So we'll end up with plus 3y squared plus 64 is less than or equal to 0. Now we know this is going to be the equation of the circle, so we'll move the um, numbers across to the other side. So then we'll have, um, well, the only number is just the 64, so it's up in minus 64 here. Now we want to complete the square on the left hand side. Now to do that, we're going to have to divide everything by 3 because we just want x squared and y squared. So you'd have x squared uh, minus, and then it'll be 32 over 3x plus y squared less than or equal to minus 64 over 3. Now we just need to complete the square on the x term because the y is just the y squared on its own. So that will be x minus, now remember it needs to be half of what this is, so that's going to be 16 over 3, half of 32 over 3 is 16 over 3, all squared. And I need to subtract this squared, which would be minus 16 squared, which is 256, over 3 squared, which is 9. So we've completed the square on that, plus y squared, less than or equal to negative 64 over 3. And then the last step would be to add 256 over 9 to both sides. And that will give us the center and the radius of the circle. And that will give us 64 over 9. So from this, we can see that the center of this circle will be the coordinate 16 over 3, 0. So we'll just write that down. 16 over 3, 0. And the radius, well, that's just going to be the square root of this, which is going to be uh, 8 over 3. 8 over 3, so just the square root of that. And this symbol here is going to be telling us that we're going to be shading the inside of the circle, shade inside. So I'm just going to use my diagram that I had from part A. Right, so let's put in the center of the circle here. So that's 16 over 3, 0. Now it has a radius of 8 over 3 which means that one end of the circle is going to be over here at 8 over 3, because that's 16 over 3 minus 8 over 3. And if I do 16 over 3 plus 8 over 3, that's 23 over, sorry, 24 over 3, which is 8. Then the top of my circle is going to go up to uh, 8 over 3, and it's going to go down here to minus 8 over 3. So let's try drawing a circle, see how we get on. Okay, that's not too bad, better than last time. Now we're ready to move on to the second um, region here. So this basically just says that the real part is between 6 and 4. 
So these are basically just two lines at six and at four. And we want to shade between them. So uh, six probably going to be about here. It's bigger than 16 over three. It's smaller than, um, well, smaller than eight, and it's bigger than 16 over three. And then the other value of four, that's going to be here. That's between eight over three and 16 over three. It's 12 over three, four, like this. So we want to shade between these two lines and inside the circle. So our shading, let's try it this way, is going to be this, whoops, not that. I just want the inside of the circle. Sorry, between the two lines, so I'll take those away. Try again. We just want this sort of, sort of, bit in between those two lines. So that would be the shading for that. You should now be able to do exercise 3B on pages 99 to 100 of the textbook. So just a quick recap um, of these uh, regions where we're shading. So if we had, for example, something like this then this would be the shading of uh, between two half lines so maybe you know something like this a line here a line there and we're shading between the two where this would be the angle theta one or the argument theta one, this would be the argument theta two, and this point here would be the point with coordinate um, z one. Remember that we want to write it this way around. We want the symbols that way around to keep the notion correct, uh, notation correct. So I'll just like write it like that. If we have something of this form, like this then we need to use the technique from the previous section is that we need to find the equation of this circle of circle algebraically and that's something that we've learned about in the in the previous section so we get the cartesian equation of that circle if we get something like this where we've got the equation of circle less than or equal to some value here that means that we shade inside the circle if it's greater than or equal to again the equation of the circle and we've got greater than or equal to some constant that means we're going to be shading outside the circle and don't forget that if we have overlapping shading then really we need to uh, give uh, the region using set notation. Whether it's the um, overlap of two shadings or it's the union of two shadings. So our net set notation is going to look something like this. Set is a complex number. And then we write down over here what the uh, region is or the loci is and then the same over here and then we write down what these are yeah so it's important that we use set notation where we have this overlapping shading <laughs>